All right. Hi, everyone. So, welcome to Different Mini Paths. Today, today, we're going to talk about anxiety. And anxiety can do a lot to us. It can make us um, feel inadequate. It can start a depression. It can cause a hurt to raise. It can cause us to lose time sometimes, like physical time, and not realizing that time has passed us because of the anxiety. It can help. Um, it also causes us to probably lose some type of um, memories as well as um, just trying to keep ourselves together. Anxiety is not fun. I've known a lot of people that have anxiety that's around me, and I have chronic anxiety. It's developed from the past, since I was a little girl, all the way until now. It's gotten worse over the years, but I've learned how to realize when I'm going to have an anxiety attack or a panic attack, because they are two different things. An anxiety attack is more you can work through it. A panic attack is where you can't work through it and you got to take a step back and use either paper bag and do breathing exercises to work through it. I had a lot of panic attacks through my marriage where I'd literally have to pull over the car on the side of the road to do and to, to, to breathe. Uh, it was, it's been a lot. And a lot of people don't talk about it. But it's time for, for us to start. You're human. We have rights to feel the way we do. For some reason, our society wants us to suppress it. And is that healthy? No, that's not healthy. But how do we look at it and say, okay, how can I build better from this? How can I do better from this? There's the factor of the unknown. For somebody that is a used to be people pleaser, that used to be a type A personality that had everything kind of figured out and thought I was, this is the way I was going to do and this is what's going to happen and had the rug fall underneath, like pull underneath of her um, in college and realized that life had a totally different plan and everything you planned out was not how it was supposed to be. Or, and how life had other plans for you. And that's a blessing, number one. It's a blessing to have their plans. But the unknown is scary. You got to really be strong to go through an anxiety. Anxiety people that have, or have, people that have anxiety are some of the strongest people I've ever met. Because I'm one, if you're trying something new and you don't have anxiety, then either you're like a psychopath <laughs> or you're just really positive about the outcome. There's always some type of anxiety that comes from all of us. I remember going through auditions and just feeling overwhelmed. I've practiced this, um, you know, these measurements like multiple times. I've practiced these compositions over and over again. I've done the licks and the slurs and the sound and the intonation on each note. And it was, per like, you know, it was perfect in the practice room after performing it three, five times like a performance. But then now you're officially going on stage and you're going to be in front of the judges and now it's your time to perform fully. And people tell you to picture everyone naked in the audience. Well, that does, it never worked for me. And then having to have constructive criticism come up to you and say, well, you know, beautiful performance, but bam, 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 bam. <laughs> you were off on this note over here. You were holding your horn funky on this little part. Your armature was off at this section. Your breathing was not consistent over here. You shouldn't be wearing heels and flats. You're just not good enough. You're never going to make it because of this song. You're not going to make it. Over and over again, I got that through the music world. And all I wanted to do was just perform. I just wanted to play. There was days where I would literally hold my French horn in that practice room and just bawl my eyes out. Because I wasn't perfect. 
so I anxiety ate. Always a week before, I would either not eat whatsoever or I'd eat a whole bunch and a whole bunch of bananas because you know, protein and <laughs> bananas anxiety go hand in hand. You wonder why musicians take a whole bunch of bananas. Well, that's the reason why. I still have anxiety. I remember, as I've told in my you know podcast with Where Bikers Unite, I've talked about how I had you know my first event after seven years of being like a hermit and only doing certain things it was kind of overwhelming and having to know the protocols and stand up to these type you know type of people and having to sit there and show you that. You're not human. When I have problem myself to, at a certain age, being 35 now, I'm like, listen, I'm going to show you the real me, and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. And there's some times where afterwards I'm like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said that. And then sometimes I stress about it. But then I go to bed and I let it go. Because you know what? It's done with. I did it. I remember always fidgeting when I was a little girl with my dad. When he was like diagnosing me over the phone, telling me what I was, personality disorder, you know, there was something wrong with me, and I would just fidget because I was never good enough. Through my marriage, I always felt inadequate, couldn't have sex right, couldn't do you know the dishes correctly, wasn't cleaning correctly, wasn't caring for his needs correctly. You know, it was constant pressure. When they, when they would go to your mama, my mom, and it was like, you shouldn't have married him. How dare you marry him? He wasn't a good fit for you. I told you that. You know, it was, I got it from all sides. So the anxiety just built. And as a people pleaser, which goes hands in hand pretty much with people have anxiety, it's hard. Because you want people to feel special. You want people to sit there and say, hey, I care for you. A very empathetic person, and I hear your needs, and I care for you. It's a lot to take on. I've learned over the years, especially now, where I'm just like, listen, I'm. I have to be strong, and I have to be unapologetic for who I am. I'm running a, an organization that's never been done before. I'm meeting a whole lot of people. You know, I got to show them a tough side of me, of who I am, I'm strong. But to be honest with you guys, I'm human. There's times where I cry in my truck. There's times where I don't know what I'm going to do. There's times where I'm like, my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this on my own, RVing it, traveling. Going in out of biker businesses, don't know who owns them. Make sure it's not a patch holder. You know, there's things that, there's a lot of pressure there. Saying the wrong thing, saying the right thing. I'm a cuckoo kind of person. I'm going to be real. I can be loud. I can love a joyful laugh. Sometimes I'm obnoxious. Sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I'm really happy. But I would always, I treat people how I would always hope to be treated. By loving them for who they are and not judging them but our society is such a judgmental world we don't understand that sometimes people look how they feel sometimes people don't look how they feel and you could never imagine how depressed they are or that they had a panic attack that morning I remember the time when I was me and my ex-husband were at it full force, like at each other's throats. And um, we just weren't getting along is what I'm saying for the whole week. And I had a jury coming up and I was always stressed as it was. And I remember him taking my neck and choking me and throwing me on the ground. And he did some other stuff, which I'm not really wanting to say right now. And I literally, that <laughs> an hour later, I was in my car riding to a jury. After I just got choked by my ex-husband. Driving to a jury. Going to perform. And after the jury. 
I sat there and my horn teacher comes out and she was like, you shouldn't have worn heels. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. And I just stood there and she was like, good, good job in your jury though. But you know, this is what was off. This is what you need to work on. It's going to be like a C plus a B for me because it just didn't feel like it was a good performance. Plus you're wearing heels. That was the day where I stopped wearing heels. But no one sees, have seen me in heels since then. You may not know what goes on in people's lives. But I personally want to always treat people, like I said earlier, how I would love to be treated. That you don't know what's going on in your lives. Don't have expectations. Love them for who they are. If they're cuckoo and weird, if they have dementia, if they look funky, if they have crazy hair, they don't wear makeup, they're fat, they're skinny, they're too skinny, they're medium size, they have big boobs, they have little boobs, they're short, they're tall, they're tiny, who cares? Because what's going on in their life matters. So love them for who they are. And if somebody gives you their time of day to open up their feelings, then let them share it with you. And don't judge them. If I could sit down with my music directors again, I would say be a little easier on your students. Don't want to be too easy because you don't want to just be given a cracker. <laughs> but you And don't call it constructive criticism because that's just criticism. Give them, maybe say feedback instead or say hey you're just jury sucked but that's okay nothing up there's always up from here it was not a good play it's not a good situation you know there's so many different types of teachers and our teachers are the ones our parents are teachers we're teachers so I would hope through this podcast you guys realize that we're all teachers and we're all students. doesn't matter if you have a PhD hanging up on your wall and you're a doctor. You're still a student. Yes, congratulations on going through all that schooling. But congratulations on that person who's worked with their hands for years and has done many levels of schooling that probably beats your doctorate. So, before we get all high and mighty and huffy puffy, let's humble ourselves and realize people have anxiety. People go through things before they have to perform. Sometimes people don't know where they're going. I sat down a couple weeks ago with an RV, wonderful female, who um, is just beautiful. And she was like, I have no clue where I'm going. And she's like, I'm leaving in two weeks. <laughs> And I looked at her and I said, gosh, I wish I had that feeling. And she was like, what feeling? I was like, that relaxing feeling of I don't know where I'm going. She's like, I'm a little nervous. And I said, oh, you are. I could never imagine. She's like, no, don't let my calmness fool you. I am very nervous about this, but this is our life. And this is how we live. If we could live like an RVer, how much freer our life would be. How much less anxiety and how much less medication we have to have to realize that what society puts you in this little box of wanting to be perfect. Is it helping anybody right now? No. It didn't help me at all for years. Just caused stress, eating, and weight gain. And a lot of pressure and then hatred towards those people that pressured me. And I don't have a hatred bone in my body, but I was the, I was just didn't want to be around those people. But I still tried to make them pleasing them. I had a story I have to tell, and this is going to ruffle some feathers, but I'm not going to say names. When I was a horn player, I had wonderful band directors, wonderful conductors that I played under. I absolutely adore all of them. But, of course, there was expectations that...